In February 2015, Borussia Dortmund was at the bottom of the Bundesliga. After 11 defeats in 19 games, they were technically one of the worst teams in Europe. That is, unless you agree with this guy. Meet Matthew Banham, the owner of Brantford FC. According to Banham, the 2015 Dortmund side was actually the second best team in Europe. Is he mad? Well, data compiled by Banham allegedly shows that Dortmund's results were simply down to bad luck and not bad football. A few years on from this bold claim, and Banham has led his Brantford side to the English Premier League. The key to his success? Moneyball. Welcome to another One Football and Athletic Interest collaboration presented by Bybit. In this video, we will break down how data and the famous Moneyball technique have revolutionized the transfer market. Most people know the word Moneyball because they watched the Hollywood movie or pretended to read the book. But what exactly is Moneyball? When Billy Bean became the general manager of the cash-strapped MLB side, the Oakland A's, he decided to use data to help find quality players on a budget. Bean realized that other teams were placing more emphasis on a player's ability to hit the ball than on the number of times they made it to a base. By targeting players with low hitting stats but relatively impressive on-base percentages, Bean was able to pick up bargains. At the end of the day, who cares how far they hit the ball if they are still able to score the runs? Following Bean's success in baseball, many people have tried to replicate his methods in other sports. With the gap between rich and poor growing every season, football would be a logical place for Moneyball to thrive. But applying Moneyball to the beautiful game is harder than you might think. Thousands of different types of data can be collected during a football match. The game can switch between incredibly complex phases of play within seconds and intangible elements such as team spirit can make or break a game. That is without considering the emphasis that fans place on a team's style of play or a player's attitude. But this complexity hasn't stopped teams such as Brantford and Liverpool from using data to find incredible opportunities in the transfer market. So how exactly does Moneyball work in football? From improving player fitness to creating new tactics, when Moneyball transferred over to football, it lost its original meaning and became an umbrella term for the use of data in football. But let's focus on how football clubs use Moneyball in its purest form – finding undervalued talent. Imagine that two twins are both strikers in the Premier League. Lionel has 15 goals in 30 games, but his brother Cristiano has 25 goals in 30 games. The market would automatically consider Cristiano to be more valuable. But the market is ignoring one very important statistic – expected goals. The higher a player's XG, the more clear goal-scoring chances they create per match. If Cristiano was only expected to get 12 goals, then it is clear that luck and bad goalkeeping are playing a part in his success. Leo only scored 15 goals, but his XG was 20. If he learns how to convert more of his chances and steals some luck from his brother, he could easily increase his goal tally. Traditionally, clubs would go for Cristiano because of his impressive record. This is an expensive approach and there is no guarantee that Cristiano can replicate his form at a new club. Leo is available for far less money and if you can teach him to take his chances, his goal tally and price tag will rise accordingly. FC Mitteland rose from underachievers to Danish Superliga champions with a squad recruited through expected goals. Even Liverpool and Arsenal have attracted praise from Moneyball pioneer Billy Bean for their data-based approach to the transfer market. Perhaps the biggest Moneyball success story comes from Brentford. When Brentford found Said Ben Rama, Ollie Watkins and Neil Mope, they were all scoring below their expected goals. This significantly lowered their values, allowing the club to snap them up for a combined $8 million. At Brentford, the trio improved their goal-scoring stats dramatically and were eventually sold for a collective $100 million. Expected goals is a very basic form of Moneyball and clubs have since developed their own unique strategies. One investment firm purchased several clubs across Europe and created an interconnected web of teams that all follow Moneyball. By simultaneously testing their data methods on multiple markets, the group can find undervalued talent incredibly quickly. For example, Brentford now uses data to ask a very interesting question. If every team in the world played in the same league, what would the league table look like? 
To answer this, the club ranked each team in the world based on a variety of metrics including goals, quality of opposition and style of play. Brentford found that a lot of teams outranked them in quality but had far less valuable squads. This is probably because the team played in a less fashionable league. Brentford was then able to raid those clubs for their best players, finding a number of bargains along the way. Modern Moneyball is not just about finding undervalued players. Data can also help clubs find players that fit a specific system or style of play. In 2017, Liverpool realized that Roberto Firmino created more expected goals from his passes than almost any other player in his position. They then identified Mohamed Salah as the perfect player to convert those chances and paid 42 million euros for his services. In his first season at Liverpool, Salah scored 32 goals in 37 games. Data collection has grown to the point that every single decision a player makes during a game is catalogued and analyzed. Clubs can now simulate a potential recruit's compatibility by analyzing the player's typical reaction in certain situations. For example, a club looking for a player to fit a fast-paced attacking style will want to see how the player reacts when they receive the ball in an advanced position. Do they dribble at the defenders or simply pass backward? Data can also help national teams. Before Germany's 2014 World Cup triumph, data analysts monitored 7,000 matches and created statistical models which help the coaches decide which players and tactics to use in each game. Similar data-based player evaluations have been implemented at Bayern and Hoffenheim. Data may help you identify a cheap and talented player, but the collective culture of a club can often be more important than each player's individual ability. So how can clubs use data to find players which are the perfect fit on and off the field? Enter Human Data Collection. The roots of this approach can be traced back to the days of Brian Clough and Peter Taylor. Legend has it that Taylor once followed potential signing Kenny Burns to a local dog track to see if his rumored drinking and gambling problems were as bad as feared. After a few hours of spying, Taylor became convinced that the rumors were overblown and Nottingham Forest signed Burns shortly after. Within one season, Burns was considered the best defender in the English First Division. In the modern era, clubs such as Brantford have been known to go through fan forums to read rumors about potential signings. In fact, Brantford carries out a complete personality analysis on every transfer target. This involves up to 25 scouting reports. The club is especially careful with foreign targets and seeks to determine if they are able to adapt to a new culture. A cohesive culture is something that Brentford's players have identified as integral to their success. The culture we've got going on here is so good. Everyone is on board, everyone is looking in the right direction and it shows on the pitch. Good people do good things. In its simplest form, Moneyball helps clubs find top quality talent for bargain prices. But the technique has been adapted to fit the complex world of football and is now capable of helping teams find players to fit specific systems. Despite this newfound love for Moneyball, football teams cannot forget that players are more than a data set. Traditional scouting will remain a useful tool as clubs look to combine cold hard performance data with deep understanding of human nature. Thanks a lot to Bybit for supporting this video and until next time.